I found one last spot with those ugly plankton propaganda towers. Use whatever you can find to knock them down. You mean there's more? Yep, sure enough, there's more of them. The last of Plankton's propaganda towers are here on the edge of the desert. Okay, I'm just gonna point out right now that Mindy is totally wrong here. She is totally wrong. Oh, well, not... Oh, well, here's the thing. Those... I should say those speakers on top of those towers. They come back later in the game. But not the towers themselves. So I guess Minnie's sort of right here. The sort, she's sort of right, but not exactly. But anyways, I digress. Oh, breathtakingly evil. These tracks form part of a slide through this area. I need you two to race down them and knock those towers over. Sounds kind of hard. Don't worry, guys. Stay on the track, jump over obstacles, and hit any plankton signs you see along the way. Good luck. By plankton sides, in case you're confused here, she actually means the targets. So, keep that in mind. So, as I said at the end of the last episode... Oh, there we go, there's one of five towers destroyed. Basically, each time you hit target, you will destroy a tower in probably some of the most comedic fashions ever. <laughs> some of them are actually kind of funny, actually, the way you destroy some of these towers, but at any rate... Um... This is, this is our very first uh, Spongeboard level. Yes, Spongeboard. That, and I, the only reason I call it that is because that is what the game's uh, instruction manual refers to them as. I don't have a, game, a video game guide for this game, but I do have the instruction guide, and that's what the instruction guide, instruction booklet. And that basically calls these levels Spongeboard levels. Okay, so this target will destroy a second one. And our second tower becomes a bridge for us. How lovely. Actually, it's very much lovely. Um, also, on these types of levels, you will run into uh, foggers or sometimes other types of enemies. Don't, do not worry about them because they cannot hurt you as long as you're in this. But yes, you're basically in this level for whatever reason. You are sliding in a bathtub. I have no idea why, but you just are. So level is called Rub-A-Dub-Dub -dub, Slide in the Tub. Um, but yes, essentially, these sponge board levels are this game's equivalent to these slides that you ran into in uh, Battle for Key Bomb. Just imagine uh, several little uh, um, sand mountains, basically. Um, now, in case you guys are wondering, I do believe there are a total of... Uh, there are three sponge board levels in the entire game. Um, but some of them... Actually, one of them in particular is my least favorite level in the entire game. And for reasons, I will begin to as soon as we get to that Spongebob level. But uh, basically, Spongebob levels are very similar to uh, Krabby Patty Wagon levels because you have the exact same missions. You have the exa exact same four missions to do. You have the main objective mission, and then you have the regular time trial, or time challenge, I should say. The ring challenge. And then a Macho Time Challenge. Just like the Sponge, the, the Paddy Wagon levels. And also, this is something I've, I haven't mentioned yet. No matter how much you upgrade your health, you will always have three hit points when you're doing Sponge Board and Paddy Wagon levels. They are, the, the health in these levels is not affected by your upgrade, upgrade health. Um, for the purposes of gaining the treasure chest in this, in this uh, level, it is actually impossible to get the uh, second, or I think it's the first one on the first try. It was actually over by the second uh, tower, actually. So now, um, after swimming this fourth tower, you're going to want to jump onto it because this is your, how you progress to the level. And now, there's actually two treasures you can easily miss here. For the first one, jump onto this platform and then jump down here. This treasure chest took me such a long time to find, but basically, yeah, you just come down here, and then you slide for whatever reason upwards. I don't know how the log how that logic works exactly, sliding upwards. But anyways, you do, and this cave will lead you to your treasure chest. Is this the first one or the second one? The first one. Okay, so the, actually, the first treasure chest is, is not accessible until the first time, like your first time playing through this level, I should say. And now our, our last treasure chest in this level 
You're gonna get two by DB away from the uh, final path here that leads to the Goofy Cooper token. You're gonna jump back across here, across these three platforms, that will lead you to your third treasure chest. So yes, there you go. I'm gonna show you all but one of the treasure chests, and we'll be and I'll be showing the other one in the next time we come back. Once we come back to this level after we take a look at the next level. Originally, when I when I started doing this let's play, I was actually planning on uh, cutting back to me skipping, like like just immediately appearing back in this level after completing the objective, so it's not to spoil the next level. But you know what? I personally don't mind doing that for you know sneak peek, I guess. I knew you guys could do it. Here's your reward. There we go. The main objective is complete. Our heroes, having foiled Plankton's evil plans, continue across the desert. But Plankton remains one stubby step ahead of them. He sends someone to make sure that they will fail. He is a vicious, ruthless killer named Dennis. Fortunately, SpongeBob and Patrick have discovered the paddy wagon in a parking lot. But the key is missing. So the only thing to do is to go into the rough, tough bar and look for it. Good luck, my friends. You're going to need it. You have to get the key to the paddy wagon back. Oh man, I love the music in this level. Good news, Patrick. You've got enough Goofy Goober tokens for me to teach you a new ability. So here we are, folks. Another new move for Patrick and the new platforming level. That we will not get to see until the next episode because we have to go back to rub a dub dub slip slide and tub for the other three challenges there. But let's check out Patrick's new move. A move that he already had from the start of the game, Bow for Keep On. My flop is the mightiest flop of all! It's called the P Smash. Now, this is also the most hilarious move in the game. Um, I don't know exactly if there is like a lot of speculation as to what the uh, swear word is supposed to be, but uh, <laughs> I guess that that can... I guess I can uh, let you guys, or leave that up to you guys in the comments below. I don't know. But yeah, I'm a, I assumed that since, you know, si that since Mindy's, uh, you know, since the first word is censored, that it's, a, that it's a swear word, which is pretty hilarious. But yeah, it's it's in a Raid E game, by the way. <laughs> At least I think this game's a Raid E. It could be a Raid E, too, I don't remember. But anyways, you can do the smash by jumping into the air by and pressing B. Yes, you have to be in the air for the smash to work. You can use it to press buttons, break through floors, and even defeat enemies. The paddy wagon is parked outside, but you'll need to get the key back to use it. That doesn't sound hard. You'll probably have to defeat all of the thugs to get to it. Not all the thugs, Mindy. Not all the thugs. That sounds hard. You can do it, I know you can. Well, if you believe in me, then I can do it. The, the key, key to the paddy, to the wagon. paddy wagon. Careful. Easy. You got it. <laughs> All right. So I guess before we uh, go back to the previous level. Um, that new enemy we were just introduced to is called a spinner, I do believe. I think they're called spinners. I could be wrong. I'll have to check after, um, after, um, up, uh, or after recording this. But, uh, basically I'll go, I'll go ahead and show you guys the smash move real quick. That's basically it. It's all it does. However, when you upgrade it, it has a whole new purpose to it, actually. A very whole new purpose. And you'll be getting, we'll be getting to that as soon as we upgrade, but for now, um... We are going to t go back to Rubber Dub Dub, slip slide in the tub, and take on the other three missions. I don't know if we will t be able to do all three of them in this episode, um, but basically the next level that is Bubble Blowing Baby Hunt. So that's the level that we will be taking on as soon as we're done with this. So yes, we got some fun missions ahead of us. Yay! Fun missions! And Rubber Dub Dub, slip slide in the tub.
I always thought the name is levels really weird. You guys took a while going down the slide the last time. Uh, no, we didn't. And it was kind of necessary to get the treasure chest, you know. Don't judge me, Mindy. I like to stop and smell the anemones. And old tires. Well, try sliding quickly instead. If you make it under the allotted time, you'll earn a reward. They do throw a bit, of a bit of comedy and some of the things that Mindy says in this game. It's pretty hilarious. So anyways, for the first time trial, you're going to want to make it to the end of this slide at, in, in less than 3 minutes and 40 seconds. Now, but you're going to want to actually... Oh my god, seriously? Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say right now, that was not my fault. That fall right there, that was not my fault at all. That was my capture card's fault because it was, you know, skipping out on me. And I don't know why it keeps on doing that. I, it just goes to show I really need to get a new capture card as soon as possible because I've had I've been using this exact same capture card for six years now, over six years, and it's really starting to have major issues at this point. Like it's starting to cut out a lot and whatnot, and it's going to be a big issue if I don't get a new capture card as soon as possible here. So, anyways. This is your first shortcut you can take after the first run through level, and this will lead you to your first treasure chest, or your last one actually at this point. So there you go, we all have, we now have all the treasure chests in this level. So anyways, as I was saying there before my unfortunate death caused by my capture card, um, try to complete this time trial in less than 3 minutes and 15 seconds, because that is the macho time challenge you'll have to beat. So, um, just be... Be aware of that as you're doing this first time trial. In fact, I will, I will be telling you guys right a ahead of time what the Macho Time Challenge is while we're doing the regular time try time challenges, so you can try to beat that instead of the um, regular time challenge. There is, however, one exception to that, we'll begin, and that is my least favorite level in the entire game. Uh, I will say that, that level is not too far off. I will just say that for now. Um, but at least for now, we don't have to worry about those stupid uh, plankton towers if we're going through this, and they'll already make it a lot faster than last time. But yes, once again, try to beat this in 3 minutes 15 seconds. You've already got, like, only a minute and 15 as far as I'm concerned left. But that won't be too bad with all the shortcuts I, I'm aware of in this level, so... Do not worry one bit. Because as long as you know all the shortcuts making this, make this level, it, that time challenge is really not that bad at all. Even the Macho Time Challenge isn't that bad. Anyways, uh, avoid the steam here, of course. Yeah, um, I should also point out that in every single sponge uh, board level, you're always going to have like a different uh, thing to slide in. So no, you're not going to be sliding in a bathtub next time. You're going to be sliding in something else. I um, can't quite remember. Actually, yeah. I remember what you do is slide in the next level is in the next sponge board level. It's not really that interesting. Um, the last one, however, is very, very interesting. It's very crucial to, to, the, story, to the plot of the movie, actually. Um, so anyways, we're not going to start taking our shortcuts here that I'm aware of. These are just the shortcuts I always take whenever I'm doing this, actually. Let's see if I can do this right. Hopefully I can pull this off. Ugh. Okay. I almost, barely, I almost missed that. So you can easily mess that one up because, it's, because your jumps have to be very, very precise. But there you go. That is the quickest path you can... Or, no, no, it isn't. I don't think it is, since I just failed the Macho Time Challenge. Oh, it's because I because of my death. So if I hadn't died, I would have beaten the Macho Time Challenge there. Wow, that was fast. Here's your reward, as promised. But yeah, that is actually the fastest path you can possibly take for this. Aside from my death. I apologize about that. But again, that was not my fault. That was my capture card's fault. I've got a real challenge. YouTube. Oh really? Three-legged race? Spell and shuffleboard backwards? No. Rings will appear along the slide. You have a limited time to get through each ring. I'll reward you if you get through every ring. All 77 rings to be exact. Yes. In this SpongeBob challenge, this particular one, there are 77 rings you must get through. Um. I will tell you guys, uh, just for you know trivia purposes, which level has the most rings of any level in the entire game. I can tell you that. Uh, but for now, um, I will. I forgot to mention when I for, when I did the first uh, ring challenge in uh, in the Sandwich Driving 101, that not all ring challenges have the exact same amount of rings. In fact, actually, they all have different amounts of rings. 
That's the reason why I was counting them, though, in each level when I was doing the practice run. It's because I wanted to see if there's, like, a correlation or a pattern how many rings there are, and there is no pattern at all. There is none whatsoever. It just depends entirely on the level. So. But yeah, it's, uh, this, this one is not too bad, although I remember struggling with this one a lot when I was younger. When I was much younger, I struggled with this one tremendously, and I hated it whatsoever so much, but... Nowadays, it's not so bad. I'm so used to it, I guess. I'm used to all the different turns it makes, but it would be really nice if my capture card would cooperate with me here, because this is probably the worst mission it could possibly mess up on. Actually, no, the Macho Time Challenges, because, again, as you saw, I failed it in that last level because of the my capture card. Or I would have if it, if it was the Macho Time Challenge, I should say. So. Hopefully that won't happen when I'm, when I'm actually doing the Macho Time Challenge. Okay. So, anyways, there's not really much else to say here. Um, I did get uh, comments like concerning the, the, the length. Or, so far, it's only been one comment, but I'm pretty sure, knowing my luck, there's probably going to be more comments about it in, in the, the more recent episodes. But, uh, yeah, I've been getting at least one comment about uh, concerning the length of my videos. I'd just like to let you guys know that this is actually the average length for an episode of mine. 15 minutes, that's always been the average length of an episode of mine, ever since like 2010 when they had the the 10 minute restriction lifted and it was up to 15 minutes. Because I figured, well, nobody's going to have the attention to, you know, to enjoy my videos that are longer than 15 minutes, so that's why I've always kept them like... Uh, because I've always had a fairly small viewer base, viewer base throughout my time as a Let's Player, and my assumption is that nobody's going to want to watch a video if it's if it's too ridiculously long. And 15 minutes to me feels like, you know, perfectly fine for a Let's Play episode, honestly. Any more than that feels like kind of overkill, honestly. Except for games like Metroid Prime, which are ridiculously long, or not, I shouldn't say ridiculously long, but just are long in general, and so they require extra time to you know, to really um, get get invested in the game, I suppose. Okay. The rings actually will take you through uh, the shortcut that I took in the, you know, my t in the time trial. So, yeah, the, the rings essentially teach you the fastest path, actually, right? Well, not exactly the fastest. There was, there was one segment there that I missed that I did different. But I believe it is faster than the, this ring challenge. But there you go, we did it. Also, if you didn't, if you missed that sign back there, it says Okie Dokie Corral. How fast do you two think you can slot? I don't know. I guess we'll we'll find out next time on Let's Play SpongeBob Square the SpongeBob Square Pants movie. See you guys, and thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. If you are bothered by this uh by these uh, time limits in these episodes. Um, just let me know in the comments uh, again, and I can, I'll can i see what I can do. Um, but really, the reason why some of these episodes are shorter than usual early on in the game is because of how the game is structured, like I said. You know, the first episode is only 11 minutes long because of, you know, how the game is structured, like how the first level is structured and whatnot. It would just feel awkward to um, do one level and half of another in one episode. But either way, um, that's game for today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.